welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to talk about audiobook I just finished listening to, like just finished listening to. I want to talk about while it's fresh in my mind. Um, it is called The Shuddering by Ania, Ania Alborn. I'm not sure how to say it. Um, the summary on Goodreads says, they only come when it snows and nobody ever gets away. A group of close friends gathers at a secluded cabin in the wintry mountains of Colorado for a final holiday hurrah. Instead, it may be their last stand. First, a massive blizzard leaves them marooned, then the more chilling realization, something is lurking in the woods, watching them, waiting. Now a weekend of family, friends, and fun has turned into a test of love and loyalty in the face of inhuman horrors. The only hope for those huddled inside is to fight, tooth and nail, bullet and blade, for their lives. Otherwise, they'll end up like the monster's other victims, bright pools of blood on glittering snow, screams lost in the vast mountains. So, as usual, I will go with my non-spoilery review first. I gave it a three-star rating. It's a high three-star Um I, I liked it. I enjoyed it, but it just, it didn't, it wasn't something I just needed to keep listening to. Um, for what it was, it was really good. I mean, if you like just a good old horror story, like a creature, you know, monster, any kind of people fighting to survive against some unknown being or some horrible monstrosity then you know this is a pretty good book um i'll tell you i'll read the uh goodreads review i left let's see i gave it three stars but it was a high three if that makes sense it was good for what it was there weren't many surprises no twists just a good old horror story about a get-together turning into a bloodbath and people fighting for their lives against what is in the woods I enjoyed it, but didn't find myself needing to keep listening. It was put downable for me. It isn't bad writing or bad storytelling or anything like that. I did want to see how it ended, although I was pretty sure I already knew how. It is the journey to the end for me, usually in books like these. The journey was pretty gory and gruesome, so that was fun. Would I recommend it? Yes, to anyone who loves a horror story where you don't know who will live and who will brutally, horribly, bloodily die. And that was, I mean, that's what this book is, is, is people are getting together. Someone's getting ready to, to leave, move away. So this is like their last chance to really get together. Um, in this like, uh, it's like a mansion up in the woods, like in, like where people go, it's like by a resort probably where you can go skiing and stuff. Cause I know they go snow, snowboarding. Um, it, <laughs> And then they get snowed in and there's something in the woods. And, you know, at first they, they think it's just, you know, wolves or something. But it turns out not to be wolves. <laughs> um, so uh, the characters, I actually kind of like some of the characters. Um, there's like Ryan. He's like the older brother. He's the one that's getting ready to leave. He has a twin sister. She's... She's okay. I mean, I like her, but she's one of those that when something bad happens, she kind of shuts down or freaks out, which I think in this case, anyone would freak out because, you know, people are dying horribly. Um, there's Sawyer. I really liked him. God, well, everybody, it's like everybody in the book is one of those where you like them, but they have flaws, which is nice because you know, nobody's perfect. He has a girlfriend that he brought up. I find out she's actually a fiance. I don't think that's a spoiler. I hope it's not. If it is, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, I was looking at other people's reviews. A lot of people were giving it like five stars, four stars. I kind of feel bad for only giving it three, but like I said, it was just, it was, I didn't need to keep listening. I wanted to keep listening because I wanted to see how it ended, even though I was pretty sure I knew how and I was right. I, it, I mean, like I said, there just wasn't really any surprises. I think I'm going to go on and get into the spoilers now because it's just what I want to talk about. It's hard to 
talk about without giving away big things. So if you don't want to hear like the major spoilers or basically a retelling of the whole story, um, I will put up the time where you can skip all the spoilery bits. Okay, so they're all getting together in this cabin, which is more like a mansion. And what the brother is really hoping to do is to get his best friend and his sister back together because apparently they had been together when they were younger like teenagers or something and then you know they just moved away and didn't stay together and uh she's went through a marriage and a divorce and uh, he's he's getting ready to move off to like i don't even know zurich or something <laughs> he's moving far away so he wants his sister to basically be taken care of so he wants his best friend to get back with her but his best friend brings his girlfriend and his sister brings her best friend because she wants a buffer i think and uh of course the brother starts really digging the best friend and i really should do names lauren we'll call her ren um ryan starts really digging ren and she's kind of digging him and uh, Sawyer, he, of course, he's got his girlfriend, but he's still into Laura. No, Lauren. I am so sorry. I'm bad with names. The sister. I keep calling her the sister. Um, Jane. Jane. Twin. Ryan. Jane and Sawyer still have sparks. The girlfriend of Sawyer starts noticing. She gets jealous. She wants to leave right away. Comes out. That she is pregnant which is why he asked her he popped the question because you know he's doing the right thing and uh but she notices even though she's engaged and everything she notices the the feelings that are still lingering between Sawyer and Jane she gets jealous so she's like we need to leave now and uh two is having trouble even sleeping in this place this cabin because she I don't know if she's a light sleeper and there's been like weird noises outside the windows and she swears she sees something moving around in the yard. I think they stayed one night, maybe two, before she's like, it's time to go. We got to leave. But the night that she decides it, there's like this huge snowstorm. So whenever they wake up and she's like, we're leaving, pack up, let's go. They go out and like, it's impossible. The, she, you can't get down the driveway and the roads are going to be closed. But she's determined. So he gets in the Jeep and he tries and he ends up wrecking the Jeep. And she, they're arguing and she's all in her, you know, hormones. And she takes off walking and he lets her. He's like, you know what? She'll come back. So he goes in to cool down. She's off walking. And that's when things start, you know, getting kind of grim. I cannot remember if it actually said what happened to her. Because the next thing I actually remember about her is um, Ryan and Ren decide to go look for her. And they see her scarf, like, blowing across the field or a meadow or something. And they're like, oh my gosh, you know, she's probably hurt or something. She's out there and just like... A thin coat, I think, and jeans. So they're like, she's gonna freeze, and she might be hurt. So they, they're running down towards the scarf when this creature comes out, and just destroys <laughs> Ren. Like Ryan's freaking out. He's trying to get back to the car to get a weapon. Like the car's up the hill or something. I think the wrecked jeep. But he turns around when he hears her scream and, and she is laying on the floor or on the ground in the snow and this thing's on top of her and she's fighting and kicking and it rips her leg off and there's blood everywhere. And yeah, she doesn't make it. And Ryan, he's just devastated. This is the part that bothered me, okay? He knew her for like two days and I understand instant attraction and, you know, how you can come to care about someone really quick. But... He starts almost mourning her the same way that Sawyer starts mourning the loss of his fiance and baby. And to me, those are very, very different. Like, I understand you're going to be really sad that you missed out on knowing this really wonderful person and you watch this person die, so you're going to be tra traumatized. But to me, there's still levels of grief and losing your fiance and your baby, your unborn child, is a much bigger grief than losing someone you met two days ago. 
I don't know why that just really bothered me but anyway back to Ryan he gets back to the house and uh, I'll just call it a house. I keep forgetting to call it a cabin. He gets back to the house and he gets in and he's like, you know, hide. And they're all hiding in a pantry. And oh, I forgot to mention the dog. I love the dog. I think her name was like Una or something. And uh, she was just a wonderful like husky. And, and she was the first one to notice the creatures because she was starting to freak out and got to where she didn't even want to go outside. At first, you know, she was all kind of guard doggy, but they freaked her out too much so she got to where she didn't even want to go outside she was scared of them and i'm just saying that when a dog's scared of something you know they're probably big and bad and scary but uh i think sawyer had started out too to look for everybody so he saw ryan come back and i think he got a glimpse of the things but ryan's the only one that's really seen them and seen them in action and the way they're described is they're really tall really thin like emaciated um starving looking they're kind of humanoid they're hairless but they have like four fingers or you know i don't know if they have a thumb if it's just four fingers or three fingers and a thumb but they they uh and then they're like feet are long and thin and they're like one less toe than what we'd have and um, I think they don't have noses they just have two holes that they breathe through and then they have this huge mouth full of like razor teeth they're definitely meat eaters <laughs> but i won't tell the whole story i'm trying not to tell the whole story but you know it's it's now down to three people in this this house and then the, the power goes off so they have no heat very little food because they were only planning on staying a few days no way to leave because the roads are blocked and then they have these monsters outside wanting to eat them because that's what they're doing they're hunting they're eating so they try to come up with with weapons you know like sharpened pull cues and and break the legs off of tables and and stuff and and they try to sit they, they're going to just sit there and kind of ride out the storm hope that you know someone will come looking but nobody knows they're there and it comes out that the house has actually been sold because it, their father had put it up on the market and uh ryan knew he'd looked it up and saw that it had been the sale was pending but didn't tell anybody else so like their family's not going to expect them to be there because the house isn't even actually theirs anymore and they didn't let anybody know they were going out there so they're just kind of stuck out there there's no cell signal no power to even charge a phone no you know it's just they're stuck and uh they think they'll survive they, they're they burning they burned all the wood they have in the fireplace but they're so now they're burning like furniture and magazines and stuff whenever one of the things just opens the door and walks in and starts looking around the kitchen for food it figures out how to open the fridge and it drags all the food out but it doesn't like any of them because you know a lot of animals don't like human food that's pretty much what these creatures are. They're like animals. And, uh, of course, you know, Jane makes a noise and it starts to attack them and they kill it. And they get this idea to cut it up and, and put its body parts all around the house to maybe scare off the other ones. Which works for a short period of time, but they realize they really need to go. Because there's, there, you know, it's ruined what food they had. And they're going to starve to death and freeze to death if they don't leave, so... They get their little tools together. They they had saved the blood of the creature because they figured they could like put it all over their body to scare off the creatures. And they decided to take off. And Anyway, I won't tell you the rest, but I will tell you that it's not exactly everybody dies in the end, but it's very near. But I'm not going to tell you what exactly happens or who survives and who doesn't. And All I will say is, in my heart... The dog survived because you don't find out so in my heart that dog found a way to survive and she's enjoying her best life out in this snow covered you know hill <laughs> mountain whatever it is I can't even remember what what state this oh Colorado it's in Colorado 
So that's the end of the spoilery bits. I just, I enjoyed it. I was shocked by, you know, the amount of gore in it, maybe. Not shocked, but like it, it was a little bit better than I was expecting. I went into it just, I'd read the summary and I knew it was like a, a monster story kind of thing. And I love those personally. But I wasn't expecting a lot, and it, it it did good. I mean, I enjoyed it. It's just like I said, it was just something that I didn't want to. I didn't have to keep listening to it. It it doesn't help that I listened to this directly after, as the trees or and the trees crept in. So I went from a really creepy kind of gothic, spooky vibe to, you know, creature feature. And like I said, those are some of my favorites. I love a good horror story. Especially if it's got one or two words in the title. The whole, the lake, the town, you know, the shuddering. And she she doesn't have bad writing style. Ania, Anaya, whatever her name is. I liked how she wrote. It's just, maybe if I'd listened to it at a different time, I'd give it a higher rating. I'm not sure. If anybody's listened to it or read it, because I just listen to audiobooks, but if anybody's read it, um, let me know what you thought. Maybe you liked it more than me. Like I said, I didn't dislike it. I'm just, I'm, it's not that I'm meh about it. Yeah, you know, I liked it. I enjoyed it. I just didn't enjoy it as much as I would have liked to, if that makes sense. All right, so I think I will end this here. Um, I am going to read something totally different next. I'm thinking either Master of Salt and Bones or um, maybe some kind of romance. I have a lot. Pucking Wild. I heard that was pretty good, and I, I downloaded it. Which, I think you can get that. I got it as, as a um, complimentary audiobook, influencer thing. But I think it's already available as audiobook on, like, it's not called Script anymore. What's it called? Everend? I think it's available there. It's probably available everywhere. So I might listen to that next. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know. I have like a huge amount of audiobooks. Because I get a bunch of books free every month. Like advanced copies. I get um, arcs of, of physical books too. And ebooks. I just don't have time to read them. I used to, I used to, um, review books, like, all the time. I have a, uh, book review blog, and I used to just constantly be getting books in and, and was struggling to keep up with them, and I finally just gave up trying to keep up. I mean, they send them to you, not, they don't expect every single person to review every book, so I stopped putting that, that pressure on myself. So now what I do is I pick a book I want to listen to or want to read, and I read it, and if I want to review it, I do. If I don't, appear to then I don't and I stopped putting that pressure on myself but now that I'm doing these whips and book reviews I'm kind of enjoying reviewing books again <laughs> so thank you for listening to my rambling thanks for watching whichever video I put up I'm not sure probably another diamond painting I did this separately again so I could get my thoughts down plus I find that the um, audio quality is better on my my little device. What's it called? It's just a little recording device. Um, I got it for my daughter so she could record her lectures and then she decided she didn't want to. Um, it's just the audio quality seems to be better on this than on my microphone. So anyway, I am rambling now, so I'm going to end this. I will see you all next time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.